Fantastic. Listen up. This is fantastic. New Zealand's first privately funded rocket will blast into space on Monday, weather permitting. Otea 1 will launch from Great Mercury Island in the Coromandel and hurtle into the stratosphere at 5,000 kilometres an hour. The man behind the venture is rocket scientist Peter Beck, who joins me now. Good morning to you, Peter. Good morning, Paul. I've, right off, I've got to say, you look very young to be heading up this organisation. Why, thank you. I'm glad that you're taking that as a compliment, and, and it should be a compliment, I suppose, because I've looked at your, your um, qualifications and what have you. You're highly qualified to do this, um, but you do look... How old are you? I'm um, 32. 32. Oh, well, you look younger than your age. Great. Um, Rocket Lab is the company that you've established. That's great. It will be the Southern Hemisphere's first privately funded rocket to go into space, and we're not talking about one of these rockets that just sort of goes up a few hundred feet and then falls to earth. No, no, so we're, we're uh, aiming to reach space, which is internationally defined at 100 kilometres, and uh, our target altitude is 120, so uh, we're aiming to spend a good three minutes in space. All right, and of course what we know is, because we've said privately funded, but in New Zealand there's been no publicly funded rockets going to space. That's right. This will be the first one. That's right, that's correct. And you're launching it from Michael Fay's Island. That's correct, yep, so Michael, so Michael Fay's Island is Great Mercury Island, and uh, yeah, it's, it's an ideal place for us. Okay, Rocket Lab, what are you hoping to achieve? Well, the whole purpose of Rocket Lab is, uh, is to plug a, a market gap, essentially, in, in scientific uh, research. So the, the, the launch vehicles are designed to uh, carry scientific instrument into space. Such as weather instruments? Such as climate change sciences, solar physics, microgravity, a whole lot of sciences that have been really lacking in the southern hemisphere. Okay, so we're not talking launching satellites as such? No, no, we're suborbital, so we just go up into space, spend a small amount of time, and then come back Come back. Down. How do you come back? Uh, via parachute. Okay. Yeah. So how controlled is that? I mean, in terms of where the thing lands? Uh, it's reasonably well controlled. We, we run pretty sophisticated trajectory models and, uh, and model all the winds and everything on the way up. So, uh, you know, it's fairly well controlled. So you're launching from Mercury Island. Where will you arrive back? Uh, we're about 50 kilometres downrange, splashed down at, at, at the sea. So you'll have boats and... Yeah, helicopter to go and pick it up. Fantastic. Mm. Fantastic. Um, how much is this all costing? Um, well, I'd have to say it's probably the cheapest space program known to man. Um, we uh, we uh, do everything in house, um, and that's sort of the, the key the key way of doing things. Is um, you know we don't have a specialist for every particular niche field. We uh, we do it all ourselves. So NASA are just kidding the world, are they? They don't need all of that <laughs> all of that fancy equipment. No, no, it was actually quite funny. We were speaking to some of the guys there um, a couple of weeks ago, and they thought we had a massive team. So, how big is the team? Uh, it was really only about a few of us. All right. You haven't answered the question about money. Is it confidential? Yeah, it's commercially sensitive for sure. Yeah. But I mean, are we talking, I suppose, hundreds of thousands of dollars or less? Um, well, yeah, I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars don't, uh, don't buy you much in the rocket business, that's for sure. So how much, I mean, it's quite an impressive looking, it's small, but it's quite an impressive looking rocket. How much of it can you reuse? Uh, we use some of the, the high value things like the avionics and, and things like that, but uh, the majority of it is, is expendable. How complicated is it? Um, it's a funny question because most people see it as sort of a carbon fibre stick and you know how complicated can that be but mm. um, to talk about some of the loads we see so um, you know the the combustion chamber and the the propellant fuel tank is at 700 pounds per square inch. Mm. Try um, and keep it simple for us. Sure so we we, we, we launch at 16 G so that's 16 times the force of gravity yep. so if you're an average Kiwi bloke at 100 kgs you all of a sudden weigh 1.6 tonnes and uh, as we uh, ascend through the atmosphere and uh, we generate over 900 degrees Celsius of uh, heat on the nose tip just from pushing through the air. And um, as we go... As so we this is serious business, people are beginning to realise. Yeah, yeah, there's serious loads occurring there. Like in the, in the engine itself, we're running at 2,500 degrees centigrade on, on one side of a bulkhead and negative 80 degrees centigrade on, on the other side of a bulkhead. So the, uh, the thermal and structural loads are really significant. And you're using biofuels? Uh, no, we, we're using our, our own fuels. Um, I brought a sample here for you today. Good. No, that's good. Um, Pop that in the car later. Yeah, what is that? It's a, essentially, it's a polymer backbone, so it's plastic, with, with 11 herbs and spices, essentially. <laughs> Brilliant. So you won't tell us what this is? You won't tell us how much it is? You won't tell us what this is? Uh, no. So The whole thing is secret. I'm surprised you came in. Um, <laughs> It's very weather dependent, isn't it? Yes, yes. Um, so the wind limits we have are, are quite tight on this particular flight qualification. Now we should stress that this is the, the first of a, a series of flight qualifications. And uh, internationally... What does that mean? So um, we're not carrying any scientific payload on this mm -hmm. mission. It's just to prove the vehicle, to, to make sure the vehicle but, but performs. But when you say qualification, you're still aiming to go oh, absolutely. into space. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, it should be it should be noted that you know internationally, um, uh, just making it to the pad is a, is a you know significant achievement in, in itself. Now you're talking it down now, aren't you? Yeah. 
So what you so you'll see it as a success if you make it to the pad. Well, I'm just um, and it's just we have to be realistic about here. You know, it is a completely new launch vehicle, completely new technology with sure, regards sure. to propulsion. So uh, all right. So perfect weather conditions are what it would it would be still it would be clear still clear um, no surface winds and uh, no no jet stream essentially. Okay, November thirtieth. What time? Uh, early morning. The the, uh, the winds. Will, will people see it from the mainland? Uh, we hope so. Um, the, they'll only see a plume from the from the rocket exhaust, but. Um, we hope so. This is pretty exciting stuff, isn't it? I mean, I've heard astronauts say that, you know, in the lead-up, it's very, very hard for them to get sleep because oh, sure. the excitement levels just build and build. I mean, what's your excitement level at the moment? Oh, it's, it's fairly high, but we're, we're working fairly hard to get there on time, so uh, sleep is definitely something that's a bit of a luxury at the moment, for sure. Right. Do you know what Hone Harawera weighs? <laughs> He's not particularly aerodynamic, <laughs> yeah. but I think if we were to gaffer tape him to the side of your rocket, <laughs> is there a way we could release the gaffer tape at 100 kilometres? Uh, I think his nose would probably melt off because... Uh, That's fine. <laughs> There's no problem. Yeah, yeah. Don't I'll... worry about the finer points. We're just running a test on him. Um, no, that's brilliant. Look, Peter, this is fantastic stuff. Thank you. You are a trailblazer, aren't you? Well, I don't know about that. I well, know. I do. Um... And we're going to keep a very close eye on this. Kai, I hope it all goes well on November 30th. Yes, yes, so do we. Right. <laughs> Brilliant. I think you've changed he your tune. He knows his stuff. Well, no, I've read you've all this stuff. He knows so much, but he still hasn't entirely filled me with it confidence. It is rocket science. He's got Isn't an it? iffy look. Look at his face. Oh no, it's I mean, a bit iffy. We, we, we wouldn't launch if we didn't think we were 100. percent Absolutely. But um, you know, it is. Uh, even, the, even the big boys who spend billions of dollars have, have oh. malfunctions. Mm. So. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. And they're well chronicled, aren't they? And no, there's only one way to test it, it, isn't it? Yep. Um, right. News With is next. <laughs>